Recently, news that retired Chinese General Liu Yazhou has been sentenced to life in prison has shocked those familiar with China's politics. Just two months ago, someone came to Beijing. He is close to Wang Kishan, the former vice president of China, like buddies. Well, we met for dinner. He said, actually, Xi Jinping is an emotional man. In general, he won't take action easily if he has a problem with someone. So, I'm still trying to figure out the real reason for Liu Yazhou's case. Why does the sentencing of this retired general attract so much attention from all walks of life? This is because the leader of the CCP has sent out a clear signal that he is turning against the Red family. Liu Yazhou was born into a Red family of the CCP and is a member of the second generation of the Red military. He later became the son-in-law of former Chinese President Li Xiannian. He served as director of the political department of the Air Force in the Beijing military region, political commissaire of the Air Force in the Chengdu military region, deputy political commissaire and secretary of the Discipline Inspection Commission of the Air Force, and political commissaire of the National Defense University. He was promoted to Air Force General in July 2012. At the beginning of 2017, under the age of 65, Leo took early retirement without being offered a second-tier posting. In 2021, Leo was suddenly rumored to have disappeared. In March 2023, the Hong Kong media claimed that Leo might have been given a suspended death sentence by the authorities because he was involved in a serious corruption case. Recently, multiple sources claimed that Leo was sentenced to life imprisonment. There hasn't been any official briefing or explanation from the CCP so far regarding the circumstances related to the case and sentence of Liu Yazhou. An overseas Chinese journalist revealed that Liu's case was sent to Xi Jinping twice. The first time, Xi said Liu was confused, sacking him from his post. Liu retired from the CCP early. However, when Liu didn't change, he was reported again by those who had been messing with him. The case was sent to Xi again. Xi angrily criticized Liu for being ungrateful and shameless, and Liu was heavily sentenced in the end. Another well-known overseas independent commentator revealed that Liu Yazhou was charged with corruption, using a charity foundation to enrich himself and so on. Voice of America contacted Liu's younger brother, who serves as the director of the China program at the Carter Center, via text message on his cell phone. He politely declined to be interviewed by VOA, saying, I won't talk about my opinions. Xi Jinping ascended to the position of party leader in 2012. From the time he rose to the top to the time he stabilized his power, it would have been impossible without the support of the Red families. For a long time, the management of the CCP has been striving to keep the power in the hands of the Red families. In their words, the second and third generations of the powerful families of the CCP are thought to have a pure bloodline, just like the royal family in the Qing dynasty. The Qing dynasty used different colors to represent different rankings within the royal family, so the descendants of the CCP's red family are also known as the ortho red flag. When Xi Jinping first came to power, almost all factions supported him, and this was actually rare. The leftists supported him, the rightists supported him, the league faction supported him, the bureaucratic system supported him, and the common people also supported him at that time. One of the most powerful supporters was the second generation of the Red Army. At that time, 400 to 500 members of the second generation Reds in Beijing gathered, and and they drafted a statement in support of Xi Jinping, including Liu Yazhou, Liu Yuan, Deng Pufang, Chen Yuan. All of them supported him. Of course, there's a reason why this group of people supported him. It's because he represents the group of people who have red roots. That is to say, he represents the orthodox red flag. After Deng Xiaoping's reforms, the CCP ostensibly formed a so-called collective leadership mechanism. But in fact, hundreds of powerful families of the CCP are calling the shots in China. In other words, it's like having hundreds of emperors. Later, Xi Jinping amended the party constitution to raise his personal authority, set up a monarchy status, and thus downgraded the so-called group of orthodox red flag. Of course, the second-generation reds rejected the idea.
Now they can't even be ministers. They dare not speak up on matters of national importance, and they are not permitted to discuss government affairs and the central authorities. Of course, this group of people is even more disgruntled, for they have suffered a loss of their power and they have suffered a loss of their interests and their status. So, of course, they are very unhappy. The attitude of party leader Xi Jinping towards his former party leaders and his own two premiers isn't surprising to the Red family. The former party leader Hu Jintao was designated by the second party leader Deng Xiaoping as the successor of the next generation. Hu was an intellectual and didn't come from a high-ranking and powerful family of the CCP. Therefore, the world was shocked when this episode happened. On October 22nd, at the closing of the 20th Communist Party Congress, the world was surprised to see an unprecedented scene. Former Communist Party leader Hu Jintao was persuaded to leave the podium in advance. The scene of Hu being walked out of the meeting has been censored in China. China's state news agency Xinhua, however, has given a rare explanation on its official Twitter account, saying it was due to Hu's health. The tweet reads, when he was not feeling well during the session, his staff, for his health, accompanied him to a room next to the meeting venue for a rest. But online footage showed otherwise. 79-year-old Hu Jintao sat next to Xi Jinping. Two attendants approached Hu, who looked a bit surprised. Upon their insistence, Hu stood up but seemed unwilling to leave. The two handlers appeared to be persuading him and made repeated gestures asking Hu to leave. Eventually, Hu left the podium, interacting with Xi briefly and then tapping Chinese Premier Li Keqiang on the shoulder as he was leaving. Hu looked unhappy throughout the entire process. However, for those familiar with CCP politics, it isn't that shocking, as the CCP's powerful and influential have never shown any real respect and honor to senior officials who don't have red bloodlines. China's premiers who have red blood, such as Li Peng. Premiers who didn't come from a red bloodline, they are seen as mere employees working for the rich and powerful CCP. For example, the former premier Wen Jiabao, Li Keqiang, and current premier Li Chang. It isn't surprising that after the 2024 two sessions, without warning, the Premier's press conference was suddenly cancelled. The Premier's press conference will not be held after the closing of the second session of the 14th National People's Congress this year. Some of the second generation of the Reds have chosen to become officials, while many others have chosen to go into business. Bloomberg reported in 2012 that 70% of China's state-owned assets were run by the children of the CCP's top eight leaders. Here is the woman who controls China's electricity. She is the daughter of former Premier Li Peng. The construction of the Three Gorges Dam is closely linked to Li Peng. When she travels, many local officials trail behind her. After Xi Jinping took office as party leader in 2012, he cracked down on a large number of corrupt officials in order to stabilize his power. He mainly targeted senior officials promoted by his two predecessors, Zhang Zemin and Hu Jintao, but pretty much showed leniency to the second-generation Reds. However, many of the second-generation Reds don't really respect Xi. Some don't bother hiding their contempt. For example, Zhen Ji Chang, a Beijing real estate tycoon and a member of the second generation of the Reds, wrote in 2020 about the government's gross negligence in managing the epidemic, suggesting that Xi Jinping was a clown who insists on being the emperor with no clothes. At the time, outsiders were watching how she would handle the issue, as there had been almost no arrests or sentencing of the second generation of the Reds before then. The result was that the Beijing real estate tycoon disappeared in March 2020 and was sentenced in September to 18 years in prison on charges of embezzlement and bribery. 
This incident is like a watershed. It shows to the outside world that Xi Jinping isn't afraid to challenge the Red family. Now it is Liu Yajou's turn. Liu is a good writer and active thinker. After Xi took office and allowed Liu to take early retirement, Liu's stance toward Xi changed accordingly. As Xi continued to centralize power, threatening the political and economic interests of the princelings, Liu's remarks became increasingly critical. For example, in a speech titled Faith and Morality at an Air Force Base meeting in southwest China, Liu said, First-rate leaders don't dare to use first-rate subordinates, but the second-rate ones. Second-rate leaders only dare to use third-rate subordinates. We cannot have this kind of mentality of Wu Dalong. Wu Dalong is a well-known literature character of short stature. Liu's words seem to criticize the party's top leader for having a mentality that only those who are shorter than oneself are allowed to work with him, while those who are taller than him aren't allowed to participate in his business. It's well known that senior officials in the current Xi Jinping administration were either Xi's secretaries or subordinates in the past. This analogy seems vivid. Liu Yajou is the author of several volumes of essays. Someone may have satirized Xi under his name. For example, an article entitled, The People No Longer Need a Great Leader, signed by Liu Yajou, has been circulating around. It belongs to this class. After Liu Yajou retired, as far as I know, former Vice President Li Shenyan's family has been targeted, and more than one of them have been targeted. So why would they go after Liu Yajou in this case? We can make this assumption. It could be because some people are pinning their hopes on him, even though he may not wish it himself. But people hate Xi Jinping so much that they put their hopes on Liu. Just like Li Keqiang, I don't think Li Keqiang would ever rebel against Xi Jinping. But why wouldn't she leave him alone? It's because too many people were holding out hope for Li Keqiang. Or maybe it's not hope, but just hope that with the person around he could give Xi Jinping a hard time, make Xi Jinping's life a little bit more unpleasant. And then they dressed up Li Keqiang in another persona. Also, Xi Jinping may worry about a scenario. That is, even though Liu Yajou might not want to go after his power, others might push him to do it as he has a good reputation, especially in the military and political circles. Liu Yajou spent 15 years at the National Defense University from 2003 to 2017. China's National Defense University is where senior generals of the CCP military are trained. Around the time of his retirement, he also formed a research organization, and subsequently donations were made from all over China. Now, it's said that the money collected from his research organization has been part of his corruption charge. In the last two years, the CCP has been purging the military, especially those who are members of the second generation of the Reds and the second generation of government officials. In contrast, it seems to be less stringent on the ordinary officers from commoners' backgrounds. Therefore, some people believe that what Xi Jinping did is to serve as a warning to the rest. The rest refers to other generals in the CCP military, especially the so-called princelings or second generation Reds. Since 2023, the CCP military has been in a state of upheaval. Here is a clip of our previous coverage. After connecting these dots, it's not difficult to understand the CCP military purge that started in 2023. The rocket force, the strategic support forces, the equipment development department, and even the national defense have become the hardest hit areas. Their top brass was taken out in virtually one fell swoop. On December 25, 2023, the Central Military Commission of the CCP held a ceremony for the promotion of generals. 2023 saw four such ceremonies where new generals were promoted, the highest number of promotions since 1988, when the rank system was restored to the Chinese military. Why did she promote so many generals? Because too many generals have fallen from grace throughout the year. In the past six months, the Communist Party's Military Corruption Investigation Department has arrested more than a dozen senior generals. And on December 29, 2023, nine senior military officers were removed from their duties as deputies to the National People's Congress. It was considered the most visible sign of bloodletting within the Communist Party's military. Most of the fallen officials served in the rocket force, including the two former commanders of the rocket force, 
the former chief of staff and deputy commander of the rocket force, the former chief of the equipment department of the rocket force, as well as the former deputy commander of the rocket force and later deputy chief of staff of the joint staff department of the Central Military Commission. Three other military industrial corporation executives were also removed from their membership at the CPPCC, the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. These include the former president of the National University of Defense Technology and vice minister of the Central Military Commission's Equipment Development Department, the former vice minister of the Central Military Commission's Equipment Development Department, the former head of the South Sea Fleet's Equipment Department, and the deputy commander of the Southern Theater of Operations, as well as the commander of the Navy of the Southern Theater of Operations. In addition, there was the former commander of the Air Force. These nine were officially announced dismissals of military generals. This kind of military purge has the power to backfire and attract powerful opponents to oneself. We can tell that Xi has protected himself more than any other major leader in the history of the CCP. For example, he doesn't announce his trips in advance for fear that someone will attempt to assassinate him. The military has its own culture, especially about being a fellow soldier. That is about loyalty. It's because on the battlefield, survival or death is entirely dependent on other fellow soldiers, who must be fully trusted in order to win the battle. This is the same all over the world, not just in China. And the highest rewards in the military are usually to reward this kind of heroic behavior, that is to save a fellow soldier. For example, one of the highest medals in the U.S. military are to reward this kind of heroic action to save a fellow soldier. The U.S. military often emphasizes the importance of never leaving fellow soldiers behind, and an army that doesn't have that kind of thing is unlikely to fight a war at all. Some of the most popular classic novels we used to read in China, such as Three Kingdoms, Water Margin, and even the martial arts novels by Jin Yong are mainly about this kind of stuff. And this kind of stuff plays a big role in reality. All over the world, there are often military coups or military governments and so on, which actually rely on this tradition of the military to rule the country. Of course, there may be exceptions in China, because China hasn't had a war for some time, and there has been no real action. This comradeship or brotherhood may not be that deep, especially under the suppression of the so-called party culture, the military tradition might not be that strong, but it's impossible for it to disappear completely, because if it disappears, this army will not be able to fight at all. I think Liu Yazhou is targeted because he has served in the military for a long time, from 2003 to 2017, in the National Defense University as deputy political commissar and political commissar for almost 15 years. He would have had a great influence, I think. We can say that most of the senior generals over the past 20 years are his students. Well, this gives rise to all sorts of rebellion against the top brass? As a matter of fact, after Liu Yazhou was arrested, the general purges in the CCP military over the past two years have become more frequent rather than fewer. The discontent in the hearts of many people may have been suppressed or hidden, but at a certain point in time it will flare up. The question now is when it will happen all at once. Xi Jinping entered his third term as party leader in 2022. He appears to wield a great deal of power, but his rule is in fact facing an unprecedented crisis currently. He has lost the hearts and minds of the people due to his COVID-0 policy and control measures during the three-year epidemic. Since then, China's economy has continued to struggle and unemployment has risen. At the same time, Xi has prioritized the security of his regime over the economy and pushed for the withdrawal of foreign investment. He has become an increasingly lonely man, and the Chinese leftists, rightists, the Communist League faction, the second generation Reds, and the common people no longer believe in him, let alone support him sincerely. As for the second generation Reds, they are a special group of people, and Xi's move to break ranks with them is likely to lay the bombshell for a major earthquake in China's political arena.
In private meetups, they complain, and some of them are really conspiring against Xi. This isn't just an empty rumor. Indeed, there are quite a few people inside the CCP who are conspiring to turn the situation over. Now, basically, the second generation of Reds have turned their backs on Xi Jinping. Anyone promoted by Xi Jinping now won't be considered if they have a background in the second generation Reds or the second generation officials, especially within the military. We know that Li Shangfu, Zhang Youxia are both second generation Reds and their being investigated or having their power taken away actually has a big impact. This group of people have a lot of political energy, so it's hard to guarantee that there won't be any trouble in the future. And when there is trouble, it's bound to be something serious. Why has Xi Jinping come to this stage? Our analysis is that he wants to preserve the CCP system, thinking that this red system can preserve his power. At a time when the whole world realizes that communism runs counter to the universal values of mankind, this fatal thinking has made it impossible for him to get out of the rut and has made him the laughing stock of the times. Even the second generation of the Reds are laughing at him. This in turn has made Xi feel extremely insecure, but the way she seeks security is to push the communist ideology harder and to use the thinking of the Maoist era to bolster his rule. Take a guess where she went after the two sessions in early March. On March 18, 2024, his first stop was in Hunan province, where he visited the alma mater of Mao Zedong as well as a local company. Hunan First Normal College is where Mao Zedong, the first leader of the Chinese Communist Party, studied and taught for eight years. Accompanied by a group of officials, she visited the dormitory where Mao lived when he was a student at the college. Inside the room, there was only one bed with mosquito nets and mattresses, and a sign on a black bed frame reads, Mao Zedong's bed. It does seem that she hasn't learned a lesson from the catastrophe that Mao Zedong brought to China. This is what Wen Jiabao, a former premier who isn't a member of the second generation of the Reds, said in his last press conference as China's premier. Mayo 文化大革命, Why did the former premier make such a statement? We speculate that before Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, Premier Wen had no say in top-level staffing, especially in the selection of the successor to the CCP leader. However, he might be aware of Xi Jinping's cultural revolution complex and might have sent some kind of terrible direction and thus made a reminder to the people.